Perfect. Let me get set up really quick. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you, Ezgi. As she said, my name is Trevin Flickinger. You can find me on the internets, on Twitter, at the username Trevin Flick. Um, my hobby is biking. So today we're going to analyze some bike share data using R. So about me, uh, quickly, I work here in Columbus, Ohio in the insurance industry as a data analyst. I'm interested in how people move, not necessarily how people move from city to city, but how people move about in their day-to-day -day lives, whether that's walking, using public transit, or in this case, biking. <clears throat> and I use R in and out of work to gain information and insights. Okay, what about you? What are some personas that are interested in this talk? Um, maybe you're curious or you're new to the R language. Uh, this will hopefully be helpful. Maybe you have some experience with R but want to know more about the tidyverse and especially tidy models. Or maybe you're just interested in learning how people bike around the city of Columbus. So this is an overview of the journey that we're going to take in the next 13 or 14 minutes. Uh, this is a model of what it looks like for the data science, data analysis uh, workflow. So we're going to start off with some environmental data. Oftentimes it's messy, uh, it's not in the best format. So what we do is tidy it up to get to the analysis phase. We're gonna do some visualizing using ggplot and some modeling. And then this part is the communication part. Uh, this can be hard to do, but R really makes it a little easier. <clears throat> so some background info, what is Kogo? If you're not familiar with it, this is the bike share program in Columbus, Ohio. It started in the year 2013. Um, there's a couple ways that you can ride. You can get a limited pass for a small amount of money, or you can become an annual subscriber like myself for a one-time fee and ride unlimited amount of times. Um, there's bike stations throughout the city of Columbus where you can check out a bike and return it. Um, the great thing that started this year is they introduced electric bikes where you don't necessarily have to use those docking stations. You can lock it up to any um, bike rack and you don't have to be limited to where they put those docking stations. So what does the data look like? Um, kindly enough, Kogo provides this data historically as well as real-time data. Uh, I wanna know if you're a subscriber, you can get your personal data as well. So you can do like personal data analytics if you're interested in that. But we'll go ahead and download the historic data. <clears throat> um, that's what this looks like. A lot of zip files. Um, you could go ahead and download those all individually, which would take a long time. And if they update it, you don't want to go back and download those again. So what I did, was made a handy R function to import those into your machine without going through and clicking each time. Um, just a few lines to download each file. And then I apply that to each um, link as well. And even though I'm a dog person myself, I used, oh, sorry, I think, I use L apply, not per. I think maybe safely is from per. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so you use this and you can download all the files. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, great, we have some starting information for all of the rides. Um, 
information about the stations. Okay, this is for one month. Let's take a look at another month. Oh boy, uh, they made some changes. Um, some of the column names are different. They combined some of the column names. It's not very consistent, uh, very messy. So if you wanted to combine all these into one data frame, you're gonna have a hard time. So again, R comes in and you can clean that up. Um, I'll just go, this is the code I used to clean it up. Uh, just takes a few lines. Um, I will share the slides afterwards as well as the code so you can go in and dive into this yourself. Um, maybe there's some better ways to do this as well so you can take a look at that. But really the important thing is you don't have to go in and manually edit this in the spreadsheets. You can use R, do it once and it will clean it up for you. I also got data from open weather. So we're gonna use that for some of the modeling uh, we'll see later in the talk. And that's it, the next step, uh, we import the data. We have a clean version of Kogo. We have our weather and then we just join those into one master file and we have uh, a file that we can analyze. So let's get into the fun stuff and do some exploring into this data. Um, so now that we have this, we can start to ask ourselves some questions that might pique our interest. Uh, one thing that piqued my interest was, where do people bike? So I made a map and this is the starting location for all the rides in the city of Columbus for the COGO program. Uh, you can see it's mostly concentrated around downtown. Uh, the high street corridor above downtown is also popular. I'll make a note that in the upper right hand corner, there's a little cluster. Kogo added some bike stations to Easton Mall. So you can see that there as well. And I thought this was funny. There's like evenly spaced out dots throughout the whole city. Um, and I was wondering if that was an error, but I believe now that Kogo might be doing that to um, anonymize the data, especially for the electric bikes. So you don't see necessarily the exact starting point, but like a rough estimate. So what other questions? Um, what are the most popular trips? Uh, downtown is a very popular destination for Kogo riders, especially Bicentennial Park, which is right along the Scioto River. Um, many of your backgrounds are along the Scioto Mile. Uh, we see the Scioto Audubon Center is also popular as well as Kosai. I broke this down into two types of trips as well. An AA trip where the starting and ending location are the same spot and an AB trip where those two are different. And most of the riders are casual. They're gonna start and stop at the same location. Okay. So this next graph I thought was very interesting. Um, by the way, all these are in ggplot as well. So once you can dive into the code afterwards, you can see how easy it is to make these. Um, so this graph really shows the trends over time and we can see some really cool things about this. Uh, for, in for instance, biking is very seasonal in Columbus. Uh, the weather and climate play a big part into whether people are gonna be biking. Uh, not a lot of people biking in the cold for obvious reasons. Um, 2013, we see that was very popular at the start. I'm not sure if that was a data error or if maybe it was popular because Kogo just started out. Maybe they had some deals going on. 
Uh, you can also start to tease out some holidays, especially 2015 and 2017. You can see July 4th tends to be a popular day for people to ride. And then one thing I want to dive into a little more is 2020. You can start to see uh, that at the beginning of the year, uh, rides are low, but that might be because of the cold, but it also tends to stay low. So keep that in mind. We have our wide picture. So let's dive into a more granular level. How do people ride throughout the day? Uh, here's a graph showing the amount of rides by hour of the day, uh, broken up by subscribers and non-subscribers. Uh, we see most rides take part in the evening. Um, a lot of people after work, you know, catching a Kogo. But what's interesting is you can see a pattern by the subscribers, like most of these are probably commuters. Uh, it's very high in the morning. Um, maybe there's another peak at, around lunch. And then people are coming back to work. So let's combine this graph and the last one and specifically look at the year 2020. Here's the beginning of the year. Most uh, rides are by subscribers at the beginning. Uh, it's cold. Um, not a lot of non-subscribers. Uh, this is probably due to the fact that it's winter and cold. Let's fast forward three more months. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you know what happened around March. Wow. There's hardly any subscribers that are writing from March through June. I think I actually gasped when I saw this. Let's take a look at the first six months all together. There you can really see um, that subscribers take a big dive into their writing habits. And just, just for um, clarity, we're gonna fast forward again to the last four months. You can see that subscribers uh, tend to ride a little bit more, um, but still uh, it's, it's very low ridership. Um, I'm, I'm sure people are still working from home. So I'm gonna say that's a big reason why we don't see that bump uh, for the subscribers. All right, so <clears throat> we looked at the long term effect. We, we dove into 2020. So I wanna give a quick overview of some modeling. Uh, here I'm just prepping the data. Um, we're gonna model rides per hour. And here, uh, thank you, Esgi and the Tidy Models team, uh, especially Julia Silgi. Um, I use Tidy Models to uh, do some quick modeling. Uh, we're gonna focus on simple models. So I made a linear regression, uh, a Poisson that's usually good for counting, as well as a random forest. Um, so we, we split the, the data into training and testing sets for us to test and evaluate our models. Let's take a look at what our models, how they perform. Uh, again, tidy models makes it easy to have one structure and you can fit multiple different models using the same basic format. And so here we see it, how it performs on the training data, uh, the linear model and the Poisson model are roughly the same, and the random forest model uh, outperforms them all by quite a bit. We also wanna see how this performs on data that we haven't seen or that the models haven't seen, just to make sure that they're not um, overfitting the data. So the linear and Poisson models are still roughly about the same. 
Um, the random forest air goes up a little bit, but um, still not too bad. So that gives you a great overview of how to use tiny models and a way we can apply that to a real world function. So wrapping up here, uh, this is the journey we took. We took some data out in the wild, made it tidy, uh, did some cool things with some plotting and some modeling, and then I just communicated that out to you. So thank you to the organizers, uh, especially Kogo and Open Weather for the data, and Allison Horst uh, specifically for sharing her data, um, as well as the R community in general for being so welcoming uh, and supportive. Uh, you can make everyone feel like a code hero. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much for that talk. That was, that was quite interesting. So we actually have quite a couple of questions. And then the first one is uh, people showing, saying that they're surprised that there weren't enough rides on the Olin Tangent Trail. Do you have any comments about that? Um, that's interesting. Um, possibly people are starting downtown and taking the Olin Tangent Trail. Um, but yeah, that, that is an interesting comment. All right, so someone actually asked about uh, looking into adding Strava data as a sort of cross comparison. So that would be a good way to add some more data to this, uh, especially if you're using Strava for biking um, or running. And I know I've looked into like Strava's online site. They have like a heat map of where people are using Strava and you can break it down by running and biking. Uh, so that'd be interesting to compare like that Strava heat map to the Kogo one. Yeah, probably. Um, and someone asked if, if you have shared this with Kogo. I've not. Um, maybe I'll tag them in like my Twitter post. Um, but I also see uh, where can we access his code. Uh, let me go back to the beginning uh, really quick. Yeah, and I want to make a little note here also that I will um, I will share a link uh, during lunchtime here in the chat box uh, that will actually take you to the directory uh, to basically access the speaker slides. So we will make that available during lunchtime. Okay. Yeah, my speaker slides will be available. And then I'll tweet out those uh, slides and my code as well. So you can look at the code and uh, dive into it a little more. Um, but I'll tweet it out at Trevin underscore Flick. Yes, thank you. That's really yeah. awesome. Uh, we will share, share the same link on Twitter as well, um, also to the slides, uh, to the speaker slides. So we're going into the lunch break right now, and we will leave the chat room now open, actually. So if you have any additional questions to the speakers, you can just ask them. And if they're around, they can answer, or we can just share the links or just have any kind of discussion. Um, and I want to thank all the speakers for respecting the time to get to the lunchtime before, you know, breaking us, you know, in hunger on a Southern day. So thank you very much. This was a really wonderful session. Uh, I thought that all of the talks are quite interesting and fun. So hopefully we'll get together again at 1 p.m. So see you soon.